Wrestling is live and wrestling has no rules. I mean, we make those up sometimes, but really, you can do anything you want. You can go completely off script and that's cool. Can't do that in other sports. Your opponent in some guises actually wants to kill you. You better stay focused. As sports entertainment is nuts, though, sometimes a match just stops. Yep, so given that, I'm Simon from What Culture. Please do subscribe. And this is exactly what we just said. Ten moments where wrestling matches went nah. Number ten, Cesaro and the beach ball. This was quite the rivalry and got some traction recently when Ronda Rousey tweeted about the beach ball. That thing is over. Happening during a post-WrestleMania crowd where fans are properly nuts, this toy you brought to the sea started to be pinged around by the audience as if they weren't at a live form of entertainment. It meant everyone's attention was diverted because look, there's a colorful circle and someone who did not appreciate this at all was Cesaro. I get it. So when this became commonplace and the flipping ball landed near the ring, the Swiss Superman jumped out to the floor, ran over to it, grabbed the thing, and popped it. Well, I say pop, he basically ripped it to pieces. This was like a tiger killing a warthog. Shock horror soon after this, WWE banned beach balls from venues, and you can't argue with it. It was not only distracting, but an insult to the wrestlers. Here they are killing themselves for our entertainment, and you'd rather play catchy catch. Number nine, the rope break ruins the rockers. This was a treat, or so it should have been. Way back when, on Saturday night's main event, the Hart Foundation were going after after the Rockers with the tag team titles on the line. Everybody knew this was going to be awesome because sometimes it's the only thing that can happen and then the ring had other ideas. It did start great as expected, but when the top rope broke after Jim the Anvil Nighthard slammed into it, we had to take a very different course of action. If you do go and find footage of this, you will see all four guys kind of just stop to figure out what to do before Hart and Michaels lock up, lightly chatting about what they were going to do next. Their lifeline was the fact it was a two out of three falls match, so as soon as the first fall was done, officials ran down to the ring to fix the damn thing. It takes forever though, or at least longer than the break would have been otherwise, and there's more trivia too. The Rockers were crowned the WWF Tag Team Champions here, and then the thing never aired, and the rain was never recognized. It's cursed, I tell you. Cursed. Number 8, Sin Cara breaks a finger. 19th of August 2013, Monday Night Raw, Sin Cara vs. Alberto Del Rio. How did it end? With Sin Cara dislocating his finger. Now, for those keeping up, this was Sin Cara round one, played by Mr. Co, the guy Triple H brought in to showcase as the future of the company. That didn't really work out due to in ring slips and an apparent bad attitude backstage, and this fight was his last with WWE, which may explain why he did what he did. In short, 25 seconds in, following a dive, the referee threw up the dreaded X sign to indicate a real injury had happened. Del Rio still rolled his opponent back into the ring to stomp away, but the ref was having none of it, called the whole thing off. Reports at the time suggested Alberto and management were furious with Sin Cara for not just putting his finger back into place and continuing, which of course is the wrestling way. Even if your arm falls off, you must finish the match. Can we really be upset though if someone is legitimately hurt and would rather stop? I'm not so sure. This was the writing on the wall, however. It was bye bye to Sin Cara, or at least this guy who was under the mask. I tell you, the whole situation is ridiculous. Number seven, big men break the ring. What better way to stop a match than to just break the ring? It's a trick that WWE has done over the years, but arguably the best was the first when Big Show and Brock Lesnar did this in June 2003 on SmackDown almost 20 years old and it's still cool. Fans went nuts for it too because you just don't expect it and even referee Mike Kyoda smashes this. The way he sold the chaos kind of made you go, wait, is this real? Before you heard yourself and realized you were an idiot. To be fair, Show and Lesnar did go out of their way to back this up. For years, they would argue that it was their overall mass which destroyed the ring and it was kind of viable. They are huge. It was obvious though and come 2015 on Talk is Jericho, Paul White lifted the lid on the magic but it is still absolutely badass. Number six, the greatest false finish. Arguably, I don't want to get into that debate, but either way, the battle between The Undertaker and Triple H at WrestleMania 28 was brutal and did have one moment which actually made people think the dead man streak was over. <laughs> Little did they know what was coming. Helped on by special guest referee Shawn Michaels, like most years, everybody assumed Taker would win, because he always won. So when the Heartbreak Kid broke his neutral ways and super kicked the Phenom right into the game's pedigree, everybody bought it. It was even better because, of course, The Undertaker had retired Michaels at a mania just gone. My word, this could be it. And it wasn't, of course not, come on now, but it did make everyone hold their breath and gasp when Taker kicked out at the very last second. It was so well done, the match did kind of just stop for a few good minutes, but nobody cared. This was about enjoying the moment, and boy howdy we did. Talk about using Triple H's reputation as well, some individuals genuinely thought Hunter had gone to Vince McMahon and talked his way into breaking the streak. 
hook, line, and sinker. Number five, PG stops TakeOver Dallas. The NXT TakeOver Dallas show in April 2016 was a monumental show. Not only did we have a terrific match between American Alpha and The Revival, but you had the debut of Austin Aries, the debut of Shinsuke Nakamura, Asuka winning the women's title, and Kota Ibushi just sat at ringside fans were losing their minds. We also had a damn good contest between Samoa Joe and world champion Finn Balor, and well, it got stopped halfway through. And why? Well, after Joe's eye was busted open and blood ran down his face like rain, WWE sent their team out there to clean him up. It isn't what they wanted on their TV. Samoa was clearly pissed off as the fans chanted, let Joe bleed, which was nice, and it did mean we had this huge start-stop period that, yes, ruined the momentum of the match. I still think we should do this as and when because it makes sense, however. Health and safety first. We did a video on this way back when, though, and people got mad, so you'll get mad again, which is cool. I just don't want anyone getting hurt for real. Number four, Flub U Cena. Good old ECW. When we arrived at One Night Stand in 2006, there was basically a four minute delay before John Cena versus Rob Van Dam because the crowd just wanted to boo the ship out of Cena. So they did. It all started when John Cena threw his shirt into the crowd, which they took great offense to, so threw it back. He did it again and got the same response. And for a good while, we were just playing merchandise tennis. This atmosphere was so damn great. Even after the bell, this didn't stop. Everyone was so enraged that John was even here. When he turned to look at them, they absolutely lost it. Started throwing toilet paper, because why the hell not, before just sat and flub you Cena at the top of their lungs although please do change the appropriate letters naturally. Eventually, we did get going as we did have a match to get done, which RVD won. And can you imagine if it had gone the other way? Man, I'd love to live in that world. Number three, Jerry Lawler's close call. I still can't get over this one because it was genuinely scary. On the 10th of September 2012 episode of Raw, Jerry Lawler collapsed live on air and suffered a heart attack. It was horrendous to watch, and thanks to superb medical attention and care, the king was nursed back to health, and thank goodness for that. Happening as Team Hell No took on the primetime players, there was no choice but to stop things because come on. There are many things more important than wrestling, life and death being right up there. And while Daniel Bryan at all continued going through the motions, their attention was very much on what was happening outside. I mean, they could have just ignored it and nobody would have cared. All people wanted was for Jerry to be okay. And for a while, we didn't know what was going to happen. Let's hope nothing like this ever happens again. Terrifying stuff. Number two, Mick Foley in the Hell in a Cell. Twice! Twice this car wreck stopped the match, and both times that should have been it, but it wasn't because Mick Foley is a hero and also nuts. The Hell in a Cell bout at King of the Ring 1998 is infamous for just how insane it was, and nobody had ever seen bumps like this on a mainstream stage. It still doesn't make sense how Foley did this and walked away. We all know the story by now, but it did halt proceedings and then some. The first hole off the top was enough to make us all assume that was it, but when he fell through the roof, sheesh. Jim Ross actually thought he was dead and who could blame him? The landing is horrendous. It's why the locker room just empties with floods of people heading to the ring to see what the aftermath is, as well as Terry Funk taking a chokeslam for his troubles just to buy everybody some time. It's kind of crazy to think about it now, but yeah, the running time is 17 minutes, and huge chunks of that are when nothing is going on. I'm still amazed Mankind took a tombstone to finish the whole thing. It should have been done after he shattered himself and crashed through a table. Number one, WrestleMania 18. Such was the noise as Hulk Hogan and The Rock met in a WWE ring. Some refer to it as the best match ever. This is even more incredible as they basically did nothing they didn't have to. WrestleMania 18 was a special night in wrestling history because on 17th of March 2002, the Toronto fans were determined to cheer Hogan like it was 1988 and the result was just magic. 68,000 plus lapping up everything and just allowing them to stand in the ring and look at each other. It's why after one lockup and hurled by Hulk, they just stopped once more, and it's quite clear both guys knew they were enjoying something completely unique. A wrestling match where you don't need the wrestling or the match. It also helped that you had two masters of reading the room and the results will last forever. A true classic, which is also not a classic, this is why wrestling is so damn good to begin with. Know of any other moments that literally stop WWE wrestling matches? Please do let us know in the comments below. And then please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. My name is Simon from What Culture. I appreciate you joining me. And I will talk to you the next time you want to talk to me. And I respond. That's how conversations work.